Hello everyone and welcome back. So I have a dilemma for you. What if you don't want to be a commoner and don't want to buy an Audi A6, a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes E-Class? So where do you turn to? Well, I think I might have the solution for you. Today you join me in my 2007 Volvo S80 V8. Straight away, I want to explain to you how this car feels to drive. It's very strange and weird. Let me explain. So I've driven many Mercedes and BMWs and they always give me that sense of urgency. I always feel like I have to be somewhere quick and I have to rush to get to a destination. And I'm not really generous. I don't let people out. I'm just generally a not very nice person on the road. Whereas in this, I feel overly kind and generous. I've let out so many people and I feel so relaxed. I have Classic FM which really helps me just mellow down and this car just always gives me that feeling. I can't explain it. It looks good too. Okay, the design language is nothing to write home about but it's not offensive. It's quite contemporary and purposeful. Moving on inside, it's typical Volvo. We have this sweeping waterfall centre console design which looks fantastic. We have some supremely comfortable Volvo leather seats with some very stylish headrests. And of course we have the brilliant interior choice which is a combination of wood and cream which I can only describe as Werber's Originals. It's simple, it's classy and it's just simply elegant. In terms of equipment, well, this car wasn't specced with many options. However, it does come with some standard features such as this sunroof. We also have electric seats, which are also heated, electric folding mirrors. We also have a sat nav screen, which you can actually control via a like remote, which is really funky. We also have a telephone underneath here, which I don't think you can use anymore. But if you do want more spec and more options, you can opt for the executive model. This is a, the SE Lux. Um, the executive comes with much more uh, options, which is more premium S-Class like. So you get things like uh, sovereign hide leather seats, which are also massaging and cooled. You get like TVs in the back. You even get a fridge, which is absolutely my dream. I'd love a fridge just for like the chocolate milk factor. And you also get two lovely glasses that come with it. But of course, if you do want an executive, you do need to pay a premium. Um, there's one on order trader right now, just shy of 10 grand, and that's sort of what you'd be paying. Uh, so it's quite expensive compared to an SE Lux. You're probably spending an extra four grand or so. Don't take my word for it, but that's kind of the ballpark figure you'll be looking at. This car also comes with a lot of like quirky features and I've done a video on that. So if you want to see that, I will put it on the end screen and I'll put it in my description so you can click on it. In terms of practicality, it's all right. We have two cup holders on the side, a little cubby hole behind that and underneath the armrest, a very deep area which has the telephone and the remote for the satellite navigation. Door pockets are quite narrow, so not overly good. The glove box is average size. Moving on to the rear though, it's quite ample in terms of leg room and you also have ventilation on the B pillar, which is good for your passengers. Boot space is sized okay. Um, it's around 422 liters, so not as big as its rivals. However, it does have a party piece, which has, well, the 5 Series A6 and E-Class absolutely have nothing on the Volvo S80. So this being a saloon is not overly practical in its own right. However, if you go to the passenger um, seat, you can fold it down flat. So you can essentially have a through loading bay and you can fit like, I don't know, large bamboo sticks or I don't know, a really long instrument or grandfather clocks and so on. So you can fit very long items is basically what I'm saying. And it can go all the way from the back of the boot, all the way to the front of the dash without being um, snagged by the seat because it can fold down flat. Now onto driving, I want to talk about the ride straight away because that is one of the best aspects about this car. I'm on 17 inch wheels with some huge sidewalls which really helps with the ride obviously, but the way this car just drives is so forgiving and so comfortable. When you go over a speed bump, it kind of like 
I, I can't really, it's like a seesaw effect kind of, I can't explain it, but it's just so relaxed and so comfortable. Any bump or imperfection in the road is just simply gliding over it. It's kind of what I imagine driving over a cloud like, it's fantastic. Speaking of ride comfort, I want to talk about probably one of the most overlooked things in a car, and that is of course the seat. I mean, it's all right having a car that can go around tracks and drive really well, but if you're uncomfortable, that kind of ruins the experience. And this car is unreal in terms of comfort. Uh, the seats in particular, they're just so supple. The lever is very supple and very forgiving. You kind of sink into it like a beanbag. It's brilliant. I mean, it's not everyone's cup of tea, obviously. Obviously not everyone wants to sink into their car. But for a car like this, it just, the ride and the seats just complement each other to a T. Okay, so where the S80 V8 definitely excels in ride comfort, the same cannot be said about the handling dynamics and the steering. Uh, how do I explain it? It's very wayward and non-communicative. Um, it's overly light, like it's, it's so easy. I can do it with one finger if I really wanted to, like I am now. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that the whole way because that is very dangerous. But yeah, it's very, very light and I just don't have any sense of what the wheels are doing at any given moment. It understeers quite a bit. Probably isn't helped by this huge V8 at the front over the front axle. I mean, it is on the all-wheel drive system which does help during traction when there's no traction issues at all. But yes, the steering just inspires me no confidence whatsoever and I am very scared to drive this at speed around corners just because I don't feel very comfortable doing so. So yes, the handling is definitely not one of its strongest points and because these seats don't have very much bolster, the car leans a lot as well and of, if the car leans and I also lean and kind of slide out of my seat a little bit but yes I am very aware that this car is not meant to be built for cornering or handling As for performance, well, under the bonnet we have the 4.4 naturally aspirated V8 and that is named the b 488 s And that was actually helped developed by Yamaha, which is quite a backstory. The car puts out around 310 horsepower and around 440 newton meters of torque. It gets you to the 0 to 60 sprint about six seconds and tipping the scales at around 1,860 kilos. So it's not overly light. And that is kind of translated when you do put your foot down like so. The initial shove is quite compelling. However, once that initial shove is over, it doesn't really pull much after that. But where this car really excels is from standstill. This car pulls unlike anything else. And the way it gets off the line with this all wheel drive system is stupendous is a word to describe it. It has unbelievable traction and the initial probably up to 20 miles an hour is exceptional. We just put our foot down here about 20 miles an hour. Yeah, it, it, it picks up really well. It's just, it may not be the most fastest car in the world, but it's more than ample for a car like this, especially for a Volvo. And the noise it makes, I can't begin to tell you what the noise is like. It's, it's completely standard, I can tell you that for sure. And with a resonator delete, they sound stupendous. The noise factor for this car is near enough everything for me. Like, there's nothing else really like the way this car sounds. With a resonator delete, it can sound even more ridiculous than it already is. 
but the soundtrack is completely standard. The exhaust is, there's nothing done with it at all. And it sounds good. The cold star is really loud. Even when it's warm, it sounds quite loud. very beautiful soundtrack and it's quite a head turner too obviously people aren't looking at this car as a head turner because it the way it looks but more they're attracted to the sound and when they see it's coming from the volvo that excites me as so much just knowing that they looked at the car because and they didn't they didn't expect what, what it was coming from they see it's from a volvo that in its own right is what makes this car so enjoyable to own in terms of running costs well this car does sit in the highest tax bracket, unfortunately, which puts it at around £630 a year. But other than that, it's pretty good. Insurance-wise, it's a Volvo, so I can't expect insurance quotes to be mad, even for this 4.4 V8. For me, I think it was around £350 or £400. I can't remember correctly, but that is quite good for someone my age and for it being a 4.4 V8 in general. As for fuel economy, that is where this car is quite exceptional in my opinion this car has averaged around 22.8 miles per gallon in my ownership and that has been very varied and very mixed i actually took it on a longer run earlier this week it is about a 26 mile commute there was quite a bit of stop start traffic uh, it was friday traffic as well and there was some longer distance driving on the motorway at around and a generous speed, should I say. And I wasn't trying. So t keep that in mind, I wasn't trying and I managed to average 31 miles per gallon. That is brilliant. That is, to me, that is music to my ears. I love miles per gallon, I love fuel efficiency, especially when it's coming from a car like this that shouldn't be doing well in terms of um, fuel economy. And this simply just got 31 miles per gallon without breaking a sweat. So yes, when you are frugal with this car, you can expect good fuel economy if you need it to be. So it's something you could probably consider daily driving. As for parts, well, I'm not too clued up in this area, but I do know this shares the EUCD platform, I think it's called, and that is the platform which shares with the Ford Mondeo or the S-Max or even the Freelander. So a lot of the parts are interchangeable which means obviously parts are quite cheap because there are so many of them and Ford parts in general are cheap. So if you are going to replace parts, then that's also good news in regards to owning this Volvo S80 V8. Prices for these are a bit hit and miss because there's so little of them on the road. I haven't mentioned this, but there are around 100 less of the S80 V8s left in the country. So finding one is going to be quite difficult. Finding one in the spec you you desire is going to be even harder. There are around three or four on Auto Trader at the moment, including that one that has ten thousand pounds on Auto Trader, which is the executive. The other three have been on Auto Trader for a very long time now. I think they're just a bit overpriced, and no one really wants to buy a car like that in this current um, cost of living crisis we're currently in the UK. But. I bought this particular one for just shy of £5,000 and it, it's not the most well looked after one which is probably why I got it at a good price so that should give you some scope of what to pay. So should you buy a Volvo S80 V8? Uh, my answer would be absolutely yes. It's very different to any car I've ever experienced and it just gives you a feeling, I, uh, it sounds cliche but I can't explain. It's so different. It's so, so different in its own right. It's a Volvo with a V8. That's what drew, drew this to me towards the car. I didn't care that it didn't have many options because that's all I wanted. I wanted the Volvo with the V8 and that at those two combinations are just marvelous. It, it works so well, especially with this wood and cream interior. It's, it just it suits this car so well. It's gorgeous inside and I just love it. I love the way the car looks. I like how it's not too shouty. It doesn't like shout, look at me, I'm a, I'm a very brash looking car. 
It's got two little subtle exhaust pipes. You also get in a D5 all-wheel drive Volvo, and it makes the most ridiculous noise I've ever seen come out from a car that looks as ordinary as this. And of course, you're driving something which is quite rare. You don't see many of these in the road anymore. I've never seen another one, another SAT V8. I have seen an XC90 V8, which shares the same engine, but I've never seen an, a Volvo S80 V8. And they're the only two production V8s Volvo ever made. I would even go as far to say that this car gives me somewhat the same similar feeling that the C63 does. And I don't think you can get much higher praise than that. Well guys, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you've got any comments or questions you want about to know about the Volvo S80 V8, then please let me know down below and I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, then please do. About 95% of my viewers aren't and it really does help the channel and promote it and promotes growth. So more exposure for me and more views, which means I can make more brilliant content like this. So. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.